Good morning, everybody, from South Dakota. Where we've just come off the interstate to the wide open prairies. To travel back in time. We're visiting one of the coolest roadside attractions that's ever popped up in the middle of nowhere. Welcome to 1880 Town. It all started in the early 1970s when Richard Hollinger built a Shell gas station on his property out here. I mean, truly, truly in the middle of nowhere. He had an idea that maybe he'd start some kind of attraction to get more people to stop. And that's when, as luck would have it, a Hollywood film production stopped by, hoping to take advantage of all the nothingness to set up an authentic looking old western town. After the low budget motorcycle flick wrapped production, they left a few buildings behind, and that became the impetus, the seed for Richard Hollinger to gather in authentic old buildings from the surrounding area and build his own 1880 town. Which has now become one of the most popular roadside attractions in South Dakota for a very good reason. This. This is the reason, look at this old west town. This view is what you're immediately presented with when you enter 1880 town. And not only do you feel like you've stepped directly back into the old west, but straight into an old western movie. Even before you get out here, as you enter the 14-sided barn, which is filled with exhibits, there are all kinds of things that I'd pull off the highway for in a heartbeat. And we'll get to those exhibits a little bit later on, but I couldn't help it. Once I got in there, I saw this out the window, and there was no way I was looking at the museum exhibits first. Look at this place. Every single building is incredible. And it's not just one flat row of buildings like you'd expect. There are side streets and barns and outhouses and alleys and shacks and everything you need for a complete old western town. Look at this. You can get cleaned up out here. Mmm, fresh water. Right behind the old bathhouse. Everything is so detailed. It's so absolutely incredible. And it includes and incorporates one of my favorite things. Peek in, dummies. There are mannequins in here. Creepy old western mannequins. Just the kind of old school touristy thing I love. They're hard to see through the mesh. A little easier to see through the windows. You can see this guy's in there about to get a shave in the barber shop. I can't wait to see what else is waiting for us out here. Sadly, the map that they give you doesn't include any clues as to which buildings were built for the shrieking, that old movie, and which ones were the authentic ones dragged in here later, which I believe is the bulk of them. But it does beckon us to be begin our tour here at the Vanishing Prairie exhibits where things go way back. There are mastodon tusks and dinosaur teeth and case after case of prehistoric fossils. And of course you've got to be in the human history. There are so many Native American artifacts from all around the plains surrounding fur trapper stuff, U.S. cavalry stuff. Incredible. It would take you a long time to see everything in here. Look at this. Here's a chair used by the last Dakota territorial governor. Looks a little bit like a throne to me. Multiple pieces of furniture from a hotel that Buffalo Bill owned, including the telephone. Oh, and the spittoon. Gross. Ironically, if you want to see the real stuff from the Old West, you can't do much better than to come to this old movie town. Look at this old original army bed from the 1870s found at an old abandoned fort. Every layer and every era of Western history out here is represented, including the rodeo cowboys and the movie stars. But I've spent enough time in here, I Gotta get out to that town. Oh man. Just stepping out the door, I'm blown away all over again. This place is unbelievably huge. Way bigger than I was expecting. Look at this old stagecoach you can climb aboard. Sitting in front of the Wells Fargo Express office. Then across the street, you got your lumber and coal business. It's one of the best parts. There are stores galore. The folks behind 1880 Town really wanted people to know what a South Dakota town was like. Which, of course, would have included stores to buy building materials in, especially out here on the plains, where all your lumber had to get shipped in from somewhere. And look at the detail here. They got your wagon for hauling logs. And then on the side of the store, there's a sawmill over here. This is how you turn all those logs into lumber. And just to spice things up a bit out back is the old woodshed. I hope Pa doesn't take me back here. It's fun to see kids out here learning and making the connection between the giant saw blades and the lumber. And it's fun for me to see this old equipment and wonder where the heck did they dig out this old fossil? See, it turns out Richard Hullinger, the guy that owned the land and started the gas station, here. Turns out his dad was a big collector of Western artifacts. So not only did he have access to his huge collection, but that also inspired him that if he was gonna build his own Western town, he wasn't just gonna throw up some false front Hollywood style buildings. He was gonna collect the real deal. What the heck? Look at this in the town hall. They're playing a little movie in here. Wow. I'm learning. 
learning so much. It's all about the introduction of the windmill and barbed wire and the other things that killed off the open plains. I was hoping for a town meeting, but I'll take a movie. Gosh, there's so much that you can do out here. Now I can kind of tell just from the pace that people are keeping up that most people are here right off the interstate. They're probably gonna hurry along their way. So they'll maybe stay out here for half an hour, an hour, something like that. But I'm telling you, if you are into history at all, any kind of history, then 1880 Town is worth a lot of your time. Dude, just look at the old fire company building over here. And you hear that? There's a fire! Wait a minute, false alarm. Just some families making epic memories forever. Dude, look at this old fire engine. You ever wondered why they're called fire engines? Look at that equipment. It's just incredible to me, the amount of equipment that they've got in here. And of course, the family went to all kinds of auctions for miles and miles around to collect not only the buildings, but all the contents. Look at that old gaming table so the firefighters could occupy their time between fires. It's incredible, but the most incredible thing is the view. All over town, it's not just the old buildings, but the wide open spaces beyond. Man, it's your full on little town on the prairie. In my excitement to come pull the rope that uh, rings the fire alarm up there and see the inside of the fire hall. I didn't even notice that the back of the town hall has got an office for the mayor. Dude, they really could just start filming an old western movie out here right now. We've got every detail down, including the waiting room here, and then of course, Batson D. Belfry's office, the mayor of 1880 town. Look at that, they got the files in here, the flag, the old sh Dove. I love this place. Now I'm just picturing a movie here. You got all these little alleys for guys to hide in for the gunfight. You got the old newspaper printing office for them to duck into. I've seen a few of these now on this trip. And it was a really important part of Old West history. At the time, this would be like now if we combined cable TV and Facebook and every website you've ever read, everything on your phone into one source of information. Pretty important to have that in your town if you want to be authentic. And speaking of authentic, there's a couple of things I'm really appreciating out here. For one, the lamppost. They did have street lights back in the day, although they were usually lit by kerosene or gas. And then another thing I really, really appreciate are these tin fronts to the buildings. Most Old West buildings were built out of simple boards, just like you see in the movies, but in the movies for the sake of, you know, saving money. They'll just throw up some wooden fronts. You'd be lucky if they even paint them. But back in the day, it was a very common to have whole towns with buildings like this covered in this tin siding here, stamped or pressed to look like brick or stone. Part of it, yes, is to be gaudy and kind of showy so that some place like this watch repair could have the fanciest building on their street. But another part of it was definitely about making your town look like an older town, an eastern city trying to bring the comforts of home to the prairie, even if it was just pressed tin and not real stone. And you must admit, it does look awful fancy, dude. There are so many kids running around all over here. And what an awesome place to bring the kids. They're all running around learning about the history of the Old West. Pulling the bells, having fake gunfights, running around exploring. Isn't it great to be a kid? You don't know about the hardships of life yet. You've never had to go inside of a bank and try to get a loan. Please, Mr. McGillicuddy. Don't foreclose on my farm. Listen, sir, that ain't my problem. You don't pay, you don't keep no farm. I swear I'll make them payments eventually. Besides, where are little Nellie supposed to go and little Andy and, and I little- I don't care where Johnny? your relatives go, see? Dang it, McGillicuddy, if it weren't for this cage, I'd kill you. That's what the cage is for. <laughs> Stupid banks. Maybe this is why people became bank robbers. Damn, look at how ornate the bank is. It makes sense for the bank to be fancy and still people with a sense of trust. Put your money here. You can see they've got this fancy pressed tin ceiling in here. And all the fancy woodwork and metal work. I really appreciate that the walls are green. I always like to make the point, and I try to do it as often as I can, that the Old West is actually a very colorful place, despite the old uh, Western movies. And unlike a lot of the boom towns or mining camps that were set up overnight and abandoned, maybe with in a year or two, a town like this on the prairie that was meant to be more permanent and service the residents of the ranches and the land rushers needed things like a fire company, a print shop, a bank, a land office, a post office, the marshal's office, and the old calaboose, aka jail, as we would say today. And especially after the railroad came and all those people were heading out west, you needed 
a hotel. And this is the freaking awesome part, is that old western hotel right there is authentic. This came from a little town called Draper, population 125, and it's a real old western hotel. Complete with the rarest of treats. The old porch and balcony still intact. I'll tell you what, I really empathize with travelers moseying around the country, coming into some small town and having to find lodgings for the night just temporarily, because I've spent most of my life doing the same thing. I think the hotels I stay in are a little nicer. They got air conditioning and such. And I think I'd rather shop at Walmart and uh, use my microwave that's in the van than eat the uh, hardtack or salt pork or whatever they were serving up here. But imagine the importance that this building had in its very small town. Strangers coming to town, news coming to town. Think of the stories a building like that could tell. All right, I think you're picking up the gist of it. You got your land office here. You had to have one of these for all the settlers rushing in, trying to get land out of what was once Indian territory. You had 20 years to pay as little as $1 an acre. As long as you made the necessary improvements to the land and lived on it. You got your post office out here, very important to have that. For the obvious reason that you didn't have cell phones to call your family with back then. Waiting for the mail was all you could do. Ah, look at this nefarious character, wanted dead or alive. John Dunbar. All right, I don't want to completely spoil it, but by the 1980s, the Old West 1880 town had started to take shape and become a popular tourist attraction. Had the family visiting all kinds of old auctions, trying to buy up all kinds of old artifacts and implements and Western props. And so when they heard that a local Kevin Costner movie had finished a production a few miles away, without knowing anything about the film, they bought all the props sight unseen and some of the animals to live here in 1880 town and that film my friends was the one and only dances with wolves and many epic props from that movie are down there in the 14 sided barn on display we're gonna get to those at the end in the meantime the only prop that I'm worried about is look up there in that window that is a lady's leg up there in the hotel looks like we came to the right town after all Ooh la la! look at this saloon for my money it's the most epic building in town the longhorn saloon and you know what the saloons often were the most epic buildings in towns with a lot of travelers. Ranching and traveling and homesteading were all thirsty work. And oftentimes the saloon was combined with a hurdy-gurdy house, meaning a dancing hall. To say nothing of the gambling, the live music, the meeting of friends and enemies that made these devil's watering holes so attractive to people who otherwise were spending their days staring out at grass. And you know what? On a hot South Dakota summer day, some ice cream and cold drinks, which is what they're serving up in the saloon, today sound awfully good to me. Ah, look at those old swinging saloon doors. It doesn't get much more Old West than that. Oh my God, now that's a saloon. Look at the shine of this place and listen. And thunder and tarnation, would you look at this? Now this is a saloon. This is what an 1800s a saloon would have looked like. It would have been like a palace to all the dwellers of the prairie. Like I was mentioning, you would have all this fancy wallpaper just like this. Look at the ornate stage. There's a guy up there tickling the ivories right now, providing some lonesome background music. You would have had your gambling instruments. Plenty of room for sitting, drinking, eating, gambling, and then look at this. Look at all the balconies up there. That is often where you'd find the most popular attraction of a lot of Victorian era saloons. The ladies, that's right. They'd be up here entertaining their clients. You'll notice there's a lot of Western paintings on the wall. I'm not sure they would have had a lot of Western paintings back then. But the ornate chandeliers and stage, that is right out of the period. We do have a couple of really epic, authentic looking things in here. Upstairs on the balcony, you can see all these old timey paintings of lions, exotic scenes, plants. If you look back at old Victorian era pictures, this is exactly the kind of exotic thing they would have wanted to have in a saloon, which was sort of the Disneyland of its day. You had to use every trick imaginable to lure in all the customers you can. And look at that mirror back there. Mirrors. Pretty high tech. Every high toned bar had to have a mirror behind it. And look at this. Here's the bathing room and beyond the very fancy, very red Bed chamber. Mm. A little see-through screen for doing some changing, huh? You guys know what went on in here. A little exercise, you know. 
Exercise! They're not overt about it. They're letting it go over the little one's heads, but that is pretty darn cool. I found out since I've been in here that this is another authentic building dragged in from an old prairie town. And look at this. Not only does it contain an epic collection of Western paintings and prints and photographs, actually. But downstairs, the saloon is home to a costume rental shop. That's right, you can come here and rent yourself an Old West costume and walk around the town as one of the townsfolk would have looked. That is amazing. Now, I'm not going to be renting a costume today. I feel like I'm wearing too much clothing already. Meaning I should have worn shorts, you weirdo. But how cool is that? What an epic feature. You can't do that at Knott's Berry Farm. Matter of fact, I don't think I can think of anywhere you can do that. They've got stores that sell stuff like this in other ghost towns. But it's not like you can go to Disney World and run around dressed like a pirate and then ride on Pirates of the Caribbean all day. The lady downstairs told me that if you rent a costume from the costume rental place in there, you can take it all over town. And then she told me about something I missed up here. You see that bathtub in here? It actually folds up into a cabinet against the wall. It's a Murphy bathtub. Weird. See, I've been to a lot of Old West towns, but it's never, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. I am always learning something new. Well, looks like it's time to get in line to get myself some popcorn and an old-fashioned sarsaparilla. It's the most authentic way to enjoy the Old West. Hey, play something sad, darn varmint. <laughs> That's a mighty fine sarsaparilla, I tell you what. <laughs> It's so sad. <laughs> oh, so sad. <laughs> Reminds me of my mom back home. And my pa and my sister. I need to go straight. <laughs> Well, that tears it. I gotta get me an honest job. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can work at the livery. Or be an apprentice at the saddle shop. Nope, can't work in here. Too close to the saloon, I can hear the piano. I love that they have all the authentic tools and stuff. And I also love that they have the old snake oil salesman's wagon. Dr. Phil Good's White River Tonic, the magic elixir for man or beast. That's it. I could become Dr. Phil Good and sell tonic and elixirs and heal everyone in town. Ooh, we're going for a ride. Whoa. Slow down there, you darn horse. But it's weird to step into an authentic wagon that actually has springs and shocks in it, you know what I mean? Most touristy wagons don't actually roll like that. But 1880 Town is full of stuff that rocks and rolls. Look at the size of this wagon collection. Everything from buckboards to little hackneys, farm wagons and prairie schooners, little tour bus style ones. Look at that old prairie schooner there. The old covered wagon. You needed to cover your wagons out here. The sun is pretty brutal. They got old railway baggage wagons. From what I understand, from time to time, they hitch some of these up up and take people for rides. We're here in the middle of the week, which means less activities, but it also means less people, which is just the way I like it. Now there's a couple of little buildings we haven't seen yet, but I can no longer ignore the biggest and boldest. The big white prairie church at the end of the road. This was St. Stephen's Church from the little town of Dixon. And it's pretty darn big and glorious. And of course it would have to be to compete with the glories of the saloon to keep people's attention. This is where all those hard drinking, tough cowboy types would go to repent. Oh, I can hear services going on right now. Oh, that's not scary. Oh, oh please let me in. Dear Lord, I've been a cussing and a fighting. I've been picking my teeth and scratching my rear. And I need forgiveness. Churches shouldn't be locked. It's a mighty fine congregation in there. And stained glass windows must have been crazy to someone from the prairies. It's awfully opulent and wonderful, but for once, those mannequins are creeping me out. I guess the saloon wins today. Look at that. You can see the whole town laid out before us. There's a bunch of buildings we haven't checked out over here, but before we do, there's another little feature past the town that we should probably wander down to see. It's just a quarter mile ahead is the old homestead. Now to get to the old homestead, you pass some beautiful old water tanks, a camel out there in the field. And I was gonna say horses, but you know what? These look like mules. Howdy there, old mule, how you doing? Look at this. I make friends wherever I go. You like a scratch on your ear? Aw. Yes, you are so sweet. Look at these mules out here trying to keep the flies off them. It ain't an easy life for a mule. Especially with that ornery. 
Suspicious camel back there. Anyway. Once you're done petting the friendliest mules in the West, you can get up on top of this observation tower. And once you've conquered your fear of rickety, sketchy heights, you can grab some binoculars and try to spot 1880 Town's herd of longhorns out there. Pretty darn majestic. And look at this. We can see the old homestead. Look at it. Imagine being out there all alone, no neighbors for miles around, complete darkness but for the stars and the moon at night. Well, and you know, the, the headlights on the interstate highway over there. It doesn't look that far away, but I'll tell you, out here in the South Dakota summer sun, you feel every step of that quarter mile. Whew. You notice a lot of people were willing to go up and see the mules and the camel. Nobody but us is crazy enough to walk out to the homestead. Look at that, it's beautiful. And you do feel miles from anywhere out here. Nearby interstate or no interstate. You can hear all the insects and the birds and the sound of the prairie, which is gorgeous. You can see Pa's old windmill, which is used to pump up water from the well. And this little pioneering homestead or barn. And the little, wait a minute. Surprise of all surprises, the old homesteader barn is full of Pa and Ma's animals. Look at this. Look at that lazy chicken. I thought it was dead for a second. There are chickens and ducks all over the shop in here. I wasn't expecting ducks. I wasn't expecting chickens either, to be fair, though. Well, that's an unexpected surprise. Too bad Julio stayed in the car. He'd love seeing these hot chicks. Look at all Pa's old equipment. He's trying to make a living off the land. Looks like they set out their washing to dry out here. Boy, these people need some money. They need a good harvest. They're wearing rags. Dude, I guess this is the best way to make some sick punk rock pants. Man, imagine that. Imagine living out here on the prairie, middle of nowhere, trying to scratch out a living from the land. So you could pay off that title to it and then for some pioneers maybe sell it and move on to the next place where you do it again in the middle of nowhere you'd be lucky if you lived this close to a town and look at that you'd be lucky if you had a wagon too to get you there look at all those modern cars going by the wagon that's called juxtaposition friends anyway finally we're home oh look at that your bed your kitchen table the crib for the babies your stove, everything was crammed in here. A little tiny loft for some of the smaller kids to sit in. While it might provide you some shelter from the harsh winters, definitely not enough. You can definitely imagine that in the summer when it gets stuffy in here, most people would just want to sit out outside on the porch. Yes, sir, we's homesteaders, all right. Came out here in the great migration, about 75 or so. Took me a long time to get these timbers. First, we were living in a sod house. I made it out of dirt here, but you know, Ma, she likes living in wood, so I headed on down to the depot in my buckboard and brought back some boards for her to live in. Now we've been raising them chickens here and these longhorns. Got a camel coming to me. Fella owes me a couple of favors, so once I get that camel, I'll be traveling on into the west Maybe join them fellers that are looking for gold. Cause I tell you, farming kind of boring out here. I don't mind hard work in these Dakota summers, but I can't stand them Dakota winters. I heard out in California, it rains all day and they got orange trees and mice the size of dogs. Yep, time to be leaving the homestead. Cause we got a long walk into town to catch the train out west. Now the sign over here says that Otis the camel loves popcorn and luckily I saved me some popping corn from the saloon Otis 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 unfortunately doesn't look like Otis wants any popcorn today let's see if the mules want some popcorn you want some popcorn mule the mule is not interested wait Oh, the mule's eating the popcorn. That's a popcorn eating mule. Well, if Otis wants to be unfriendly, we'll let the mules have all the popcorn. I do genuinely like this. It's only by coming out here and being under the hot sun out in the middle of nowhere, you really get a feeling for that prairie old west history. True, the interstate's right out there, but that only takes a little bit of imagination to erase. Now, at the dawning of the 1870s and 80s, something new came to the west. The transcontinental railroad and trains crisscrossing the country, bringing even more more and more settlers out to the plains and the prairies and there's nothing I love more
more than a good caboose, and luckily, 1880 Towns got us covered with a little railroad history as well. Once the tracks were laid, towns sprang up all up and down the rail lines. Meaning you could get an easier supply of lumber, and you no longer had to ride out here in a wagon. With all your possessions aboard, you could come out here by train car, and then buy your wagon and your setup and go to homestead. And Still wouldn't have been a comfortable journey back then, not by our standards today. Well, not unless you had a bunch of money and a first class ticket anyway. But it would have been a lot easier than coming by a wagon to come by train, pull into the depot, and begin a whole new life. Imagine coming out here, stepping down from the train that had brought you all the way from an eastern city, watching your link with civilization disappear down the tracks, and then suddenly, you were on your own. You had to make your own luck. Billy Zane style. This is the old Gettysburg South Dakota Railroad Depot. So this is an actual building you would have departed to the east or farther to the west from. You would have looked up here at the train bulletin. Think of the hundreds of people that sat on these benches waiting for the train. There is nothing like that for us today, except maybe getting on an international jetliner, or perhaps a rocket to space with Elon Musk, or Jeff Bezos. This was high, high tech for the time. Ooh, look at this old 1800s fire extinguisher. Oh, look at this on the wrong side of the tracks. More animals, some little donkeys. Be careful though, little donkeys can bite, right guys? They never make those little donkey noises whenever I see donkeys. Hey buddy. Oh, look at this one's jealous. I never thought I'd make so many friends in South Dakota. Stinky little guys. And just look at this place. Have you ever seen anything like it? They have everything you need for a complete pioneer town. They're ready to film a movie any second out here. The only, and I mean only thing that breaks the illusion is the highway noise, so it's too bad they couldn't build the town a little farther away for sound purposes for movies. But then they wouldn't get all those visitors popping off the highway like us right now, dude. Even the upstairs is fully stocked. This place is awesome. What the heck is a milk filter disc? Oh, man. All right, I've been avoiding it, but we've been avoiding it long enough. We have got to make our way back to the beginning of town. And check out those old original props from Dances with Wolves. But along the way, look at the these old Studebaker wagons in here. And I think we'll find some more interesting stuff as well. Cause down past the playground and the one room schoolhouse is this old corral over here with the original wagons from Dances with Wolves. These are the wagons that John Dunbar gets on with Timmons to get from Fort Hayes to Fort Sedgwick, where he is out in the middle of nowhere. And they shot those scenes sort of nearby, out in some national grassland type area, some original prairie scenery. And it's so weird, Kevin Costner's butt would have been right up there. How often can you say that? Now, in addition to having these wagons here, which are, again, screen used from the film Dances with Wolves. From what I understand, they used to have the mules that actually pulled the wagons in the movie, as well as Kevin Costner's horse from the film, but sadly it's been years and years since Dances with Wolves. And they have since passed on, although I believe they're buried out here. Where exactly? I don't know. Maybe we'll come across them. Dude, even people who don't like westerns love Dances with Wolves. And if you've never seen it, maybe you're not a big Kevin Costner fan, I still highly recommend it. His best movie by far. When I saw Avatar, I couldn't believe how they just ripped off Dances with Wolves. Although I guess it is a common story. I mean, Last Samurai has the same plot. I love watching that film with my dad. All right, I cannot get enough of this town. I can't get enough of looking at it, especially now that the lawnmowers are out here cutting the grass, by which I mean the goats. And look at this, looks like they have business at the marshal's office. Wait a minute. Look at their necklaces. They are the marshals! Oh my gosh, that's incredible. You know you're having a tough time with law and order when you gotta find some goats to be your marshal. And look at the office here. Wow. I promise I want to go see the other props from Dances with Wolves, but things like this keep distracting me. Look at this fun jail. What a fun one. Think the Cowboys thought it was fun? And then next door, some other buildings we missed. A little old school standalone jail actually pulled here from another old town. I believe the very same Gettysburg, South Dakota that the train depot came from. Look at that actual varmint slept in there. Ooh. And then right next door to the jail on some very valuable real estate, if you think about it. An actual pioneer home. A little house on the prairie of this woman named Lillian Walker. Weird. She lived in this house with her sister Josephine while they attended school. I can't get over how tiny and cute these little houses are. All right. 
That is it. It's always acceptable to be distracted by goats, but the time has come to re-enter the 14-sided barn that's full of all kinds of crazy relics downstairs, including a pretty sweet gift shop. But we've got to make our way upstairs to see all these original props from Dances with Wolves, including this, the sod house from Fort Sedgwick that Kevin Costner lives in during the best parts of that movie. Dude, if you've ever seen that film, this is incredible. Can't believe we're looking at this. It's a fiberglass shell, almost exactly like the sod house building from the outlaw Josie Wales, which I filmed back in Kanab, Utah. It's a fiberglass shell, so it survived all this time. And all the stuff inside is from the movie as well. The little writing desk, the chair, everything. Rather than hauling all the stuff back to Hollywood, they just sold it sight unseen to 1880 town. Look at this, this is a teepee from the movie. Not sure which one. It's been a little while since I've seen it, but Stands with a Fist could have been in here. And then look at this. This is pretty crazy. They have the dead buffalo, the prop buffalo from the movies. Remember the whole buffalo hunting scenes? This is crazy. The largest buffalo herd on earth, while well, the largest privately owned one is it very close by. That's the ranch on which they filmed all these scenes. It's now owned by Ted Turner and not open to the public, else I'd love to go out there. But Ted Turner doesn't have all of this. They even have the scalps from the movie. Ugh, creepy. Look at here are the coffee cups that the natives were using at the fort when they were teaching him to speak, you know, Tatanka and all that. There's Kevin Costner's toothbrush from the film. We've got John Dunbar's poncho. And the rope that stands with a fist is holding in that picture is this rope right here. Here's the bridle from Buck, Cisco, the horse in the movie. I believe that's the one that later lived here, and I'm really hoping that horse isn't him. Because there is a stuffed horse back here by the Fort Sedgwick set. Ugh. Is that you, Buck? It might be. Ooh. And then look at this. This was Buck's stunt double. The dead Cisco. Cisco is the name of the horse in the movie, I think. And of course, when he dies, they're not gonna kill a real horse for the movie. That'd be mean. So they got this big old fake dead horse in here. Don't flog it. There's no point. Whoa, there's Kicking Bird's headdress over here. And there's the breastplate for John Dunbar. That's the actual piece of costuming he wears. I actually filmed the Fort Hayes set in Rapid City, or very close to Rapid City, over by Mount Rushmore last year. And I was out this way with my son, and I really wanted to hit up 1880 Town back then, and it wasn't in the cards. We were out of funds. The van wasn't running so well. That reminds me, speaking of funds, this entire show, which has lasted more than 10 years now and over a thousand episodes, is 100% funded and depends on viewers like you. You. So please, if you want to see more places like this, maybe share this video with someone you think would like it. Check out our sick merch. We got lots of t-shirts and hats and such. And the number one way you can help is by becoming a member. Just check out the links below or go to randomland.com. We got all kinds of weird exclusive content over there for you guys. But even if you're new here and you're not ready for that, we appreciate you watching. Just one more time and then I'll shut up. If you enjoyed this, I really appreciate you guys sharing. A lot of people watch and then tell me in person, man, I wish there was a way I could help you out. The simplest way ways to go share this video or some other ones that you might like with your friends, your family, your relatives, heck, even your old dead horse would do. And now that I've said all that and finally seen the filming locations and props from Dances with Wolves, I believe that's it for me at 1880 Town. If you're driving through South Dakota on your way to or from Mount Rushmore, this place is 100,000% worth your time. You can even buy your own pioneer antiques like these or see a little piece of the head of Washington on Mount Rushmore or get your a wife or just stroll about the craziest town on the prairie. Speaking of crazy old ghost towns, make sure to check out the craziest ghost towns in the United States that I just filmed two episodes back. Sign the guest book, exit through the gift shop, purchase your souvenirs, and you'll have done your duty. Now we can go home and sleep well. Yeah, there's a cat crossing there, just like they did in the old west. Ooh, that's one hungry steer. Things we missed.
an old pioneer home, complete with a pot, boiling potatoes. Must be Irish people here. Awesome. The inside of the old blacksmith shop. Very smithery-ish and full of spiders. But look at them glowing coals. And the inside of the old general store in town. Look at that big old mirror. Look at all the shoes and supplies and stuff. Look at these stock shelves in the back. And even a stairway up to the living quarters of the proprietor. That's what happens when you get actual old buildings. They actually have all the rooms. Wait a minute, what's this? A mad scientist's lab. Are those brains? What were they doing in the old west?